So how did a Cambridge exam look in 19th century? Well, I have no fucking clue, but I know what question was asked at an exam in 1886 and I would like to solve it with you guys. Right now, we're supposed to evaluate the integral between 0 and 4 of the natural log of x divided by the square root of 4x minus x squared. That's all with respect to x. Uh, so how are we supposed to solve this problem? First of all, I'd like to complete this square in the denominator. So I would like to rewrite my integral as the integral between 0 and a 4 of the natural log of x divided by. And now the square root of what? Well, we can write this thing right here as negative, and then I'm going to open the parentheses, x squared, and then minus 4x. And now if I add a 4 here, I'm going to be able to rewrite this entire thing as just x minus 2 all to the power of 2. But I add it, or because of this negative sign right here, rather subtracted 4, so I will also have to add it back again. I'm going to then get the square root of just 4 minus and then x minus 2 all squared, and that's going to be all with respect to x. This is my new integral in question. Okay, so I would like to do something with this denominator once again. What can I do here? Well, because of this square root that I really honestly would like to get rid of, and this square that I've got here next to this binomial fr factor, yeah, I think a trick sum would be a good idea. Maybe a trick sum like, you know, x minus 2, x minus 2 equal to some kind of a sine of u maybe, but it won't really work because then I'm going to get, you know, 4 minus sine squared of u. It's not quite the thing I want. But if I were to, let's say, plug myself 2 times the sine of u, then when I square it right here, I'm going to get 4 sine squared of u. I'm going to be able to factor out the 4. Well, that's something I'd like to go with. So I'm going to get x minus 2 equal to double in sine of u. That will mean that dx will be the same as double cosine of u times du. And as for the balance of integration, whenever x is equal to 0, I know that sine of u has to be equal to, I mean, double sine of u has to be equal to negative 2, and so sine of u has to be equal to a negative 1. Hmm, well, I have infinitely many options for that, but I will just take myself negative pi over 2 for my, for my lower, lower bound, and that will mean that when x is equal to 4 and double sine of u has to be equal to 2, then sine of u is equal to 1. Well, I don't really have infinitely many values that I could take in here because it has to be, you know, a pi away from from my original point, you know, so my integral still make, makes any sense. I will then get u equal to positive pi over 2, and this is going to be my u, so I'm going to plug it in right now. I'm going to get the integral between negative pi over 2 and also pi over 2, but positive, of the natural log of, mm, well, x was just double sine of u plus 2. I'm kind of doubting that it was a good idea to make this use up. I'm joking. I already solved this, so I know it's going to be a good idea. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and in the denominator, I'm going to get the square root of, and now it's going to be 4 minus, and then 4 sine squared, of, yeah, sine squared of u as I expected. And then my dx is going to become double cosine of u du. But now I can just factor out the square root of 4 from this denominator, but square root of 4 is the same as 2, I'm going to just take a 2 there, but this 1 minus sine squared of u, well, that's just cosine squared of u, but if I take the square root of it, I'm just going to take, I'm just going to get the regular cosine of u, so the entire denominator is just going to be 2 times cosine of u, but that's just going to cancel out lovely with the stuff next to the du, so I'm going to get just the plano integral all from, from negative pi over 2 up to pi over 2 of just the natural log of double sine of u and then plus 2 du. Well, it's getting more and more complicated. <laughs> okay, so what can I do now? I would really love to simplify this expression a bit. I mean, this natural log doesn't really seem, you know, nice or anything, so we have to do something about it. Well, I would like to kind of use the fact that I can just factor out these two yeah, in front of the sine plus something. So, I'm, you know, I'm just going to add two times sine of u plus a one, but now I'd like to use the law governing logarithms, which is that the natural log of a multiplied by a b 
is the same thing as just the natural log of A plus the natural log of B. So I can, well, pretty much just use it in order to rewrite my integral as the integral between negative pi over 2 and just the pi over 2 of the natural log of 2 du and then plus the integral between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 of the natural log of uh, sine of u and then plus 1 du. Yep, as you can see, I also, you know, did separate those two integrals to make them well, separate. <laughs> okay, but now this guy right there, this integral on the left, this evaluates simply to just pi multiplied by the natural log of 2, so we don't really have to care about it much, but we will do have to care about this guy on the right hand side. It's gonna be a little bit more messy, honestly. So let's try and work it out. Well, what can I do to this guy? First of all, I'm integrating it over a symmetric region, so maybe I could divide this interval into two subintervals, and I'm gonna be, you know, integrating this thing on. Let's try and do it. I'm gonna rewrite this thing as the pi times the natural log of 2, rewriting this guy, and then plus. First of all, the integral between negative, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 of, oh, and 0, I wanted to say, of the natural log of sine of u and then plus 1, and it's going to be all du, and then I'm going to get the second integral between 0 and then positive pi over 2, or rather, yeah, something like this, pi over 2, of the natural log of sine of u and then plus 1 is going to be all du. And I'd like to do something to this um, integral right in the middle of my expression. So I'd like to make a, a u sub for the u, so I'd like to make my u become negative u, and once it's so, you're going to see in just a few seconds. So u becomes negative u, that will mean that du gets to be... Oh, no du gets to be negative du, awesome. And as for the bounds of integration, I'd like to, well, kind of just say that u being equal to pi over 2 makes, well, now u being equal to, oh, I, maybe I'll just write it like this. So then pi over 2 becomes negative pi over 2, or the negative pi over 2 becomes pi over 2, and then 0, well, it just stays a zero, so I'm gonna get the integral between pi over two, positive pi over two, and a zero of the natural log of one, and then plus sine of negative u, but as sine is just an odd function, I can just write it as one minus sine of u, and then negative du, but, well, I can just use this negative sign here in order to flip those bounds of integration, make this guy be a zero and the upper bound be pi over two. Now I can just erase this negative sign and, well, come back to what I was dealing with. And you will see why this thing right here is very useful in just a few seconds. So I'd like to combine those integrals together once again, just as they well, were combined before. I'm going to get pi times the natural log of 2 and then plus. Well, I can combine them now because those two intervals of integration are the same, 0 pi over 2, perfect. The integral between 0 and pi over 2 of the natural log of 1 and then minus that sine of u and then plus my natural log of 1 and then plus my sine of u is going to be all with respect to u. But now, once again, I'm going to use the fact, where was it here, right here, that the natural log of a times b is the same as the sum of natural logs of a and b, to, well, be able to just multiply through those 1 minus sine and 1 plus sine inside of those logs to get an expression that is a little bit easier to deal with. So I'm going to get the, I'm going to get First of all, we're writing this pi times the natural log of 2, and then the integral between 0 and pi over 2 of the natural log of 1 minus sine squared of u du. But, well, this is, something, this is something that we know, well, the value of. This is, or maybe I will do it a little bit more brutally, yeah, like this. This is just the cosine squared of u, but... I can use, once again, the laws governing logarithms in order to bring this to in front, or in fact, even in front of the integral itself. So I'm going to be left with just pi times the natural log of 2 plus double the integral between 0 and pi over 2 of the natural log of my cosine of u du. And this thing right here is not so difficult. 
I mean, it is difficult, but it's not as difficult as it, as it was earlier. And now, the nice thing is that actually Euler calculated this thing for us, and he proved it is equal to pi over 2 multiplied by the natural log of 2. And as Euler was, you know, an 18th century mathematician, and those guys were writing this test in 19th century, they could use it, probably, so we can too. And, well, this will mean just that this 2 right here is going to cancel out with this 2 right there. And the final result is pi times the natural log of 2 minus pi times the natural log of 2, which is 0. And so the original integral right here evaluates to 0. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you in the next one.